I'm joined today by Rebecca Hoffman. She's the founder and CEO of Blockchain for Energy. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me, Pippa. So the energy sector is at a pivotal moment right now. Europe is rethinking its entire energy complex after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So starting here at a very high level, you help oil and gas companies incorporate blockchain technology. Why does this make sense for the industry during this pivotal transitional time? Yeah, it, it's, it's actually the perfect time. Uh, blockchain technology is allowing um, to have these multi-parties joining together in a way that we couldn't do before. And so it's allowing for a one source of trusted truth. Um, how do we trust the data? How do we trust what people are saying from a reputational standpoint, from um, an actual business standpoint? And so this technology is now unlocking and allowing us to have these conversations of how do we completely transform the way we work because the way we've been working is not working. Yeah, absolutely. And you founded uh, the, the prior to blockchain energy company you founded in 2018. So you've been around in this industry for several years now. And could you talk a little bit about how it's evolved? Are more people interested or more players interested? Is there just more momentum behind both oil and gas as well as blockchain? Yeah, that's right. Um, so blockchain, I think everybody's starting to know this has actually been around for decade or more, right? And um, so Bitcoin is just one usage of uh, blockchain and mining is just one way to prove out um, something happening. And so, you know, we came together and said, we can utilize this technology in a whole different way. And we started off with just kind of conversational forums back in 2018. Um, after a year, we had over 18 operators um, and over 90 people coming every month to have these discussions. And so finally, I said, look, are we going to just keep talking about this or let's actually, you know, create a consortium and let's go and try to start building some of these solutions uh, because our companies and our industries need it, need these new solutions. And so that's what we did. And in 2019, we were a blockchain program under a nonprofit. Um, and by, you know, early 2020, it was, uh, we called it the inflection point of, hey, this is working. The technology is here. The technology is not the hard part. It's the change management that needs to occur, our mindsets, the way we work together. Uh, beyond our own four walls. And in those realizations, we said we really need to create our own nonprofit. It had to be nonprofit uh, because we're talking about sharing these new technologies and way work for the whole industry, kind of by the industry for the industry. And so in 2020, we created that nonprofit rebranded as Blockchain for Energy. So within this move to an ultimate consortium, who is really driving this? Is it oil and gas employees? Is it executives? Is it shareholders? Where is the momentum actually coming from for this consortium and who's involved? Great question. So right now we have uh, four programs, about six projects running and over 60 participants from member companies, about 10 member companies right now. Um, Chevron, ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, Repsol, uh, Pioneer Natural Resources. So we have large and medium sized companies. Um, and for the projects themselves, uh, the companies are going in and getting those subject matter experts. So the end users are really having a say into their future of building this new way of working. And that helps change management because now they can bring that back into their companies and they're having a say and an input into building these new ways of working. But everything has to be grounded um, at you know, a top or a bigger level, a higher up level. And so um, we're saying, you know, let us come and help you be the blockchain center of excellence and, and help you create that roadmap because blockchain is going to have to be a piece of your digital roadmap in your, you know, your digital transformation. 
So we've talked a lot about kind of the high level use cases here, but what does that actually mean on the ground? What are some specific examples of how oil and gas companies are implementing blockchain technology? So one of our first um, use cases in, was around actually in the field unmanned sites. Um, we had these unmanned sites and we needed to know the activity that's going on from a safety perspective. Um, in addition to, are we really paying for what services are being delivered? And so the beauty of blockchain technology is you can get outside of your own four walls. Right now, businesses are all about uh, being reactive, right? They're, they're reactive to external factors and they can only lean up and get more efficient within their own four walls. Blockchain technology is now allowing where we're actually taking the process through all the functions of one company, you know, one operator, and then pushing beyond that into, you know, in this um, example, the trucking company. And so how do their operations work? Why, you know, are they being reactive to the operators and are the operators being reactive to the oil field vendors and suppliers? And a lot of times the answers are yes, or there's regulatory aspects that we have to take into account and how is that affecting us? So being able to kind of almost start over and remap the process um, through all parties involved and then create a blockchain that literally sits and that data then is visible in real time. It's trusted because it's cryptographically locked. So when the operator says, this is how many barrels I have, the trucking company says, I picked up this many barrels, you can easily let the computer do the work for you and say, within tolerance that we've agreed up front, does it match? Yes, just pay. And then everyone gets paid faster, the visibility's there, the trust is there, because no one owns that database and everyone's having inputs into it. And those inputs then create and trigger the activity. You alluded to this, but these supply chains are so complicated and there's so many different steps and people involved. In order for this to work, does everyone have to you know, sign up to use blockchain or can it work if not every single step of the way is open to that? I mean, what are some of the challenges in implementing blockchain across these very, very diverse and complex supply chains? This is a great question. And it's one that as we've been on our endeavor the last four years together, that it came up very early on is what do you do about off chain, right? Um, not everybody, you're never going to get 100% of people on chain. How do we do this? So it's something that we hit head on and we, um, we actually have four technical committees, um, groups, one around technology, of course, one around procurement, legal, there's legal aspects to these contracts. How is this going to affect our future? And then also policy and regulatory. So they all help these projects. Well, one of the things we did in 2020 while we were having COVID and in, in the, the downturn was let's, let's take a group of our members and start investigating this on a real use case. So, you know, we're, we're learning through as we're doing. Um, and what we found is the technology is amazing because when you actually come up with that challenge or that obstacle, you can go and start communicating to your programmers, okay, we need to see how are we going to do this in a good way. And then having the subject matter experts in the room saying this will work or won't work because of this. And sometimes the reasons they didn't work were because of how the agreements were written. And then we can address that. So it's this visibility into addressing it. But what we did is we came up with a, a sub of the blockchain called accounts and the accounts can be managed. Um, so when you as an operator or you as an oil field vendor or supplier can have these sub accounts to deal with a different type of relationship and they don't have to own an entire node or a piece of the computer, you know, hardware of the, of, um, of the blockchain. So are you using Ethereum or Cardano or are you creating an entirely new one um, and why? 
So um, we approach things a lot differently than most blockchain consortiums um, in other industries and in our industry. Um, and we did that on purpose because we said we're here. We came together initially. Um, we knew the technology was going to be disruptive. And we said we need to learn about this technology. We need to understand it. And, and we want to do real things at the same time. And so we said we're here to learn, lead, and leverage. And through that, we know technology is advancing as a very rapid pace. And we said there's not one to back yet because we need to understand and we're more about uh, what is the problem we're trying to solve or what is the opportunity that we're trying to, to gain. And so in that, we're more focused on that. And we said the technology is a tool. So understanding what Ethereum or Corda or Cordana or, I mean, there's, there's thousands of them out there and there's public and private and permission based. I think everybody thinks blockchain is one thing but it's not, it's many different things. And so um, we have a technical committee from all these member companies and they come together and they do these evaluations. And we've actually tested different projects on different platforms for different reasons. And then we also have used different vendors so that we can learn from those blockchain vendors. Um, so right now, like I said, we have about six projects running and we're able to see across um, these projects, the pros and cons and benefits and the whys. And some have tokenization, some don't. And as we go through these, do we need tokenization for everything? When do we need tokenization? And so we really feel that over these past four years, we've been more about let's do this deep learning so that we get it right because we need to make sure that we are creating the solutions of tomorrow that are sustainable. And I guess with that in mind, what has been the feedback so far? You work with Chevron, Exxon, some of the other biggest companies in the space. What have you heard? Are they happy? Do they like it? So um, there's a lot of comments and I think all the companies are kind of in different stages. Um, we have some of the mid-sized companies that are like, I'm ready to use it. Let's go get this. You know, I want to get my benefits here. I want to see that transparency. Um, and so there are, um, I think everyone in this consortium are really the pioneers and, you know, they're, they're striving forward. Um, but we have uh, just our very first projects are now leading to implementation grade. So we have the six projects are all in different phases. And so we're really excited um, that hopefully by the beginning of next year, you'll be seeing our members starting to use our first developments. Um, and sometimes we're partnering with other blockchain developers to help us create these things. And sometimes, you know, Blockchain for Energy is actually putting up their own uh, networks. And so, you'll see just depending on what we're developing, um, we have different strategic reasons why we do things. And you mentioned implementing some of these new technologies during the 2020 downturn. And so much has changed for oil and gas since then. And the pandemic also brought up a lot of questions about ESG. We've seen a huge amount of focus on ESG and oil and gas obviously has come under fire with ESG concerns. So how is blockchain maybe alleviating some of that or helping the, comp the sector kind of rebrand? Yeah, we're having a lot of conversations and it, and blockchain is coming up um, a lot around ESG. We actually, our board came um, to us and said, you know, it, with ESG, everybody has to help. I mean, scope one, two, and three, it affects all of us. And so we said, we're already together. How can we help? And so we started bringing together a work group to just kind of map out this green field. Um, it's not like any use case we ever have done because usually you have, you know, an as is, and then you're going to create this new to be. Um, we're all having as an entire industry create that to be. And so we think blockchain has a big place to play in it because of its inherent um, attributes around the one source of truth, data being cryptographically locked, it can't be tampered with. 
um, it having one source of truth, not like a database that can be taken down with hackers, you know, it, it's, it's more stable and secure. Um, so all of these things are really pointing of, you know, can we have certifications done on the blockchain and eventually could the blockchain be the source of registry? And these are the discussions that are just being talked about of how do we move this forward as an industry? Um, and we're very excited because this is right in our place that we've been, um, you know, learning about and getting expertise around the last four years.